For those individuals who didn't want to risk a trip to the local opium den, there was a device that allowed you to get high at home. This is a vapocresoline vaporizer used to cure whooping cough, diphtheria, asthma, clear congestion in the head, and so on. However, opium addicts found that by putting opium in here and letting that burn and the vapors would come up, they could sniff it without leaving the comfort of home. Opium resin was placed in a pan that rested on the top of the lamp. The small kerosene burner located beneath heated the resin. Then opium fumes could be inhaled. Everybody used opium everywhere. Uh, the water supplies were contaminated, all of them. And so everybody had diarrhea. Kids died of diarrhea, whole families died of diarrhea. And opium is good for diarrhea. Opium-based patent medicines became very, very popular. And there would be things like Winslow's soothing syrup, because if you had some sort of yeah, cough or sore throat, you would take something like this, and it would have a heavy dose of opium in it. It wouldn't make you better, but it would dull the, the symptoms. Opium was taken in the form of laudanum in America, going back to the 1820s. A laudanum is simply the concentration of the essence of opium. It was a great painkiller. It was also used for suicide. A number of prostitutes who had become addicted to laudanum, probably dull their senses to the trade they were trafficking in, would overdose on laudanum. They would simply drift off into unconsciousness and into a coma, and very often die. The problem is, it was soon discovered that there was a big opium addiction in the United States. So there was a desire to get people off opium. They developed a new medication that was not habit-forming uh, to get people off the opium habit. It was called heroin. OK, that didn't work very well. But in 1899, the development of aspirin helped to alleviate some of the uses of opium. In 1860, cocaine was first extracted from coca leaves and was immediately hailed as a wonder drug. Sigmund Freud recommended it as a cure for digestive disorders, anemia, typhoid fever, alcoholism, asthma, and sexual unresponsiveness. Well, cocaine is an absolutely dandy drug, and it's still used, especially by ear, nose, and throat surgeons, because it's the perfect thing for anesthetizing the back of the throat. What people used it for before it was put under prescription was for things like toothache. If you had a toothache and put cocaine drops onto your gums, your tooth and the gums and the nerves would go numb. But it was most widely used dissolved in wine and a Sicilian Frenchman named Mariani invented Mariani wine, uh, which was basically red wine and cocaine, which made him a multi-millionaire. Vin Mariani's coca wine was a hugely popular beverage. Pope Leo XIII claimed medicinal effects, although it was undoubtedly consumed for its recreational value as well. The notion of the Chinese man in his opium den smoking his opium pipe, well, that was very bad and that was very degraded. But if you got loaded on Mariani wine, which was full of cocaine, well, then you could be president. Starting in the 1860s, another modern-day vice hit the market. The Ganja Walla Hashish Candy Company made maple sugar hashish candy, which soon became one of the most popular treats in America. No wonder. For 40 years, it was sold over the counter and advertised in newspapers, as well as being listed in the catalogs of Sears Roebuck as a totally delicious, fun candy for the whole family. By the 1850s, the use of recreational drugs took a more dangerous turn. Shooting up in the West took on a new meaning in 1853, when Dr. Alexander Wood discovered a new technique for administering morphine, a hypodermic syringe. 
With this, he found the effects of morphine on his patients instantaneous and three times more potent than smoking the drug. A long, thin, hollow needle ran up to a glass barrel that contained an airtight plunger. Liquids such as morphine could be accurately measured by the markings on the glass barrel before being administered directly through the skin and into a vein. With the invention of the hypodermic needle, this meant much greater quantities or higher concentrations of drugs could now be consumed. I mean, this would be a main line into a vein. It also meant much higher rates of addiction. So with the hypodermic needle came much greater problems with drugs. These risks soon became apparent. Tragically, Dr. Wood's wife became the first person to overdose using his invention. <laughs> 